You know, let's let's start with a really, really important question. It's something I've always wanted to know when I watch movies that are filmed in the pristine, snowy landscapes. How do you go about getting all of your cast and crew and equipment there and not disturbing the snow for the shots? How come it looks so pristine when you've been all over the place clearly and you don't have a CGI budget, I would imagine? Well, a lot of it is VFX cleanup. Sure. But you have to be very careful about how you plan the day and how you move equipment in, move the, the crew in. Um, I mean, for this film, the mode of transportation was snowmobiles and cats a lot of the time. So that was a huge learning curve for a lot of the people because we hadn't shot in snow before. So, um, but visual effects in the end of the day can help make <laughs> things look pristine. Matthew, can you talk about how all you how you decided on all three of these actors my understanding is elizabeth came on on the earlier side jeremy you came on on the later right. side so how did it all come so about? when i got the script lizzie was already on board and was the first and last choice and i thought it was a great choice um gail as he said um had known taylor from um hella high water it was comancheria back then mm -hmm. I, I, right. I i i read the script before um either film was in production. So I didn't know who Taylor Sheridan was or I just went off the script and we read, I read this amazing script. But he, I, I think it was the winter of 2000, I gotta get my dates right here, 15, 16, he wanted to go that winter. And punting was not an option. So we had to, as we were coming to November, we were talking about the Corey role, and he called me up one day and said, well, what about Jeremy Renner? And I was, he'd be amazing. <laughs> um, let's, let's do this. And I think, I think, um, I think Taylor wrote you a note at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he read the note over the phone to me that he was sending Jeremy. And I realized he was a very good writer at that point because <laughs> it was a, it was a great sell for the, but um, I think we flew Taylor in and he met at your house and, so did the note turn the tide as far as to get you to open it as quickly as you did? What would have happened if he hadn't written that extra note? I would be sitting here. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, I, you know, it's a, I, there's a lot of people in my life that, <clears throat> that I trust and love, I've worked with for a very long time, that, ah, you should read this. Yeah, you got to read this. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not reading anything. I'm, I'm, I'm a daddy. Fuck off, essentially. Right. <laughs> That's on everybody. <clears throat> and then finally, Taylor came around. Like, ever again, everyone I love and trust said, like, you got to read this. It's amazing. I don't care how amazing it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm a dad. I'm retiring. I'm out of here. <laughs> and then uh, Taylor, Taylor, he left a voicemail, and he sent this, this note. And ultimately, what grabbed me is, like, dude, just read. This is all I remember from the note, whether it's eloquent or not. I said, like, dude, just read fucking 10 pages of this thing. And if it sucks, I'm going to buy you an amazing bottle of booze, and we're going to share it together. We're going to have a great time. I'm like, okay, 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 I'll, I'll read this thing. So I read the first 10 pages, and I'm like, this ass, this ass, it's amazing. <laughs> and, you know, I, couldn't, I could not say no. But then I had to think, oh, Taylor's not directed a movie before. I really need to go, <laughs> go down that road with the first-time director. Okay. And this guy walks into my house and uh, asks a few questions to him, and his emotional intelligence just shot out, and... Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he looks, looks, looks and acts like a cowboy, but he's eloquent and Shakespearean and, and thoughtful and emotional and compassionate and, uh, as they come. And I could not say no. I'm like, let's go do this, and I'm, I'm in. What's it like for the two of you? I mean, obviously, you've worked together before on the Avengers movie. It's kind of a different budget, um, and I'm sure some different creature comforts than you would have filming. Different somewhere. costumes, yeah. Different. <laughs> Is it fun to then, after the two of you know each other a bit, to work on something that's as kind of intimate and scrappy as this film, having done a huge budgeted film together? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Because I think uh, my f the first time I met Jeremy was a really overwhelming experience really? shooting the end of Avengers Age of Ultron in Italy. <laughs> and yeah. we were like ushering 200 extras into a sh sh fake ship that wasn't there. <laughs> and <laughs> and I was like, I've never done this before. What's going on? And Jeremy like had like had like held my hand through everything and was helping me out. And to go from there to literally holding on to him 
on a snowmobile going down a mountain, I don't know how fast we would be going without like any seatbelt, obviously. You're just like holding on with your thighs and your hands. And um, it does help to have that kind of trust in someone and to have that kind of history. Um, but also when we were filming Avengers, our characters, oddly enough, have um, a very like close relationship where he kind of becomes a family member. Um, or they kind of, they rely on one another. Um, so it was, it was something that we, I think we were both happy to get to actually flesh out characters together. And I know for me, I felt like I had an amazing opportunity to get to work with Jeremy and get to learn from him in a different, in a different landscape and world of, of a film. Cause you, the Avenger films are a lot of fun, but I think we all know that it's it's um it's it, you don't get as much time to dive deep, and with something like this, you get to learn from really great actors um, and directors, and you get to have that time. Gil, do you have like a Taylor Sheridan shrine in your house? I mean, I would just imagine between <laughs> this movie and Hell or High Water, you've been at this for so long and do and working so steadily, but I think you have two of the best roles of your career written by this guy and it's really allowed you to shine in such a cool way or do you yeah. feel indebted to him forever <laughs> yeah he, he's an all right guy <laughs> no i i love taylor I, i've loved him from the from the first time uh, we met but um and it's not over our journey's not over um but yeah i mean it's you just feel so so blessed to be able to come across a writer like that it's so rare and then to have the opportunity to kind of uh, portray characters that you feel you know, secure and and viscerally know they know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, especially from a native point of view. Mm -hmm. And he could have only gotten that because of the time he spent with so many native people. You know, um, and then this the respect and the love that he has for those characters. Um, yeah, I'm been, I'm uh, eternally indebted to that man. Matthew, how did you feel confident? I mean, Taylor, I guess, has directed a horror movie like six years ago, but I mean, this this essentially is right. a directorial debut yeah. for him. Um, how did you feel comfortable as one of the financial people behind this film that he could handle this as well as he did? I mean, I after I read it, I we organized a call and I spoke to Taylor for about two hours. And at the end of that two hours, I thought, well, if he can't do this, nobody can. Mm. <laughs> He's, um, he knows, what he wants, how he wants to get it. He, he knew who he wanted to work with from the crew to the... I mean, he was just very, very prepared and there was no changing his mind, even if you did disagree with him, which I didn't. So I thought... No it was, one should try. No. <laughs> no, exactly. A few have and a few have left with their tail between their legs. <laughs> and rightly so. Well, I congratulate all four of you on this. It's such a powerful film, so beautifully done.